In 1988, a new TV show premiered on the ABC. It was called The Bush Tucker Man. I'm looking for here the little freshwater mussels. You always find them tucked away underneath these reeds in running water like this. Having said that, you probably won't be able to find one. Yeah, there we go. Here's one there. Oop, two. There we, there we go. You can cook them up and boil them up and eat them. After returning from the Vietnam War, Les Hiddens, then a captain in the army, started documenting the various native foods found in Northern Australia. When I came back, I Corps transferred from uh, infantry uh, to army aviation and as a result of that found myself uh, in the left hand seat flying all around uh, northern Australia and um, Arnhem Land and those places and when you go to some of these very remote areas you've got to ask yourself the question how would I get on if something happened and I had to survive here. So what I did was I started doing it as a hobby. Mm, that's tremendous. Those leaves, those flowers there, they're loaded with pollen. When you dunk them in your brew, they sweeten it up for you. The Bush Tucker Man and his hat became Australian icons as the TV show took off. Is that the original hat? No, no, no. no. The original hat is today, I think it's in the uh, National Museum in Canberra, along with my, my original camera and my backpack and a few other. They wanted to put me in there too, but I, I objected to that. All right, well, we're going up Since appearing on our screens 30 years ago, Les hasn't stopped documenting and teaching people about bush tucker. Now, you see that over there, that vine going up there? Yeah. That's Calamus, that's a flash name. And that's, common name is lawyer vine. It's called lawyer vine because it's like the legal system. When you get caught up in it, you can't get yourself out of it. You know? <laughs> that's right. and that's he, not something you named. No, no. <laughs> After countless shows and books, the Bush Tucker Man is going digital. Les's wife Sandy says the foray into the online world will meet a modern demand. A lot of people have said, oh, you should do the field guide again, or I think it's Explore Wild Australia, and, and it's very difficult to get now. So initially, we were thinking of a book again. But um, life's moved on from those days. And so really, we decided on this website, just through talking to our kids, and decided this was the best way to go because it would reach probably many more people. Took your hand that way, yeah. They're now busy digitising Les's extensive catalogue. As I found out, you don't have to go too far to find Bush Tucker. Here, at the popular tourist spot of Palm Cove, just outside Cairns, the Bush Almond is littering the beachfront. This particular species, it only grows along the east coast of Australia. So it's called also the Pacific Almond and the Tropical Almond and uh, um, uh, I think it's called the Indian Almond as well. And actually, we never covered these when we did Bush Tucker Man. Is that right? Yeah. Is it something that you discovered later after the no, series? You, no, you knew about these the whole time? It just time. didn't fit in when we were filming it. You know? <laughs> well, lucky anyway. we're putting it on landline then. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but what we want to do now is get a couple of these and some leaves, put them down the beach while we've got the sun out, and take a photo. Brilliant. Les and Sandy then upload the photos and add the information to the website. The information Les has gathered over the years is undoubtedly life-saving. Putting it online has made it accessible, but when you're in the middle of nowhere, the likelihood of getting internet service is slim. Planning your trip before you go and using the website as a guide is key. If you find yourself in Dinden National Park, which is high country outside of Cairns in Queensland's far north, there's a veritable feast of food, if you know where to look. Yeah, this is tree fern, we call this one. And I've heard of that. You have? You see that 
part up there. Yes. That's the edible part. That's the, what we call the fiddler's head. And it gets that name. When you look at it, it's got a, a turned head, just like the end of a fiddle. Oh, yeah, of course. But you've got to boil it before you eat it and get rid of the, you see the brown hair that's running up and down on yep. the outside? Wipe that away. Just eat the very end of it sort of thing. And what's it taste like? Terrible. <laughs> Does is any, any of this bush tucker taste good? Oh, yeah, lobster's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> It provides a top feed. Tremendous stuff. What's happening here is we've collected all this bark here off a particular tree. It's called the, the emu apple tree. The bark contains a saponin. In other words, it's a bit like soap. And if you pound it up and release that sap and then drag it through the water, a billabong, it stuns all the fish in the billabong. You can collect them up and then cook them up and eat them. <laughs> there you go. That's fishing Arnhem Land style. As we head further into the bush, Les assures me there's a tree with sap that acts as a fire starter. So it gets a bit steep down here, so you just watch it. All right, I'm just following in your footsteps, Les. I don't know whether that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, this is what I'm looking for. This stuff here. Oh, nice big piece. Okay. True to his word, in cold and wet conditions, the bush tucker man lit tree sap and started a fire hot enough to boil a billy. As I was watching that first episode of that first series of the bush tucker man, I laughed, I shook my head in amazement and I learnt a heap. Did you know it was going to take off the way it did? No. No, I'd, I thought, oh, this will amuse them for a, a short period of time and that'll be that sort of thing, you know. But it just lives on. But some things about this country and this land just don't change. And the wilderness and the beauty and the attraction of the whole place remain exactly the same. And I reckon that's terrific. <laughs>